and welcome to this episode of Cardinal Film Fights. I'm your host, judge, and moderator, Mark Rollins. Today we have three competitors that are going to argue on the topic of who is the best movie dog. And let's have them introduce themselves. They're going to give their name, their major, and a fun fact about themselves. We're going to start in the middle, and then go here, and then there. Hello, my name is Trevor Michael Sheffield. I am a sophomore, a telecommunications major. I do the Tuesday morning news for radio station WCRD every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And one time, a dog dropped a big rawhide bone on my big toe and knocked the nail clean off. That sounds painful. Yes, it was. <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, Nate Richard. I'm a sophomore here at Ball State. I'm a TCOM major with a focus on uh, video production. And one time when I was running, I flipped a car off because they tried to run me over. And then they opened the car door and cursed at me. So that was fun. Good times. That also sounds painful. More emotionally, but, you know, still pain. <laughs> All right, I'm Devin Smith. I'm a political science and marketing major here. Um, fun fact about me, I was prom king and valedictorian in my high school. So. <laughs> That sounds not painful. That sounds rewarding. It was. Opposite of painful. Very rewarding. So, gentlemen, the way this is going to work, we're going to have a minute introduction where you give what you chose to the, um, and why you chose it. And then we go straight into our five-minute form in which you build yourselves up, tear each other down, the whole shebang. And we finish off with a 30-second conclusion in which you take everything that's been said, tie it up in a nice, neat little bow, and then I judge you on it. So, as I said, today is best Movie dog, canine, Doggies. for all our Latin speakers out there. Doggy. And there are none, because Latin's a dead language, never mm -hmm. forget. But so, it lives in our hearts. <laughs> in our hearts exactly. So, we're going to start with Nathan, then we're going to go Devin, and finish off with Trevor. Okay, so I'm going to start. My choice is Doug from Up. And what I think about Doug is, okay, he can talk. But here's the thing, he feels the most like a real dog because he has a personality. He has a personality that fits like our dogs at home. He reminds us of our furry friends. And another thing about him, he's just adorable, he's lovable, the voice actor. Okay, another thing about dogs and movies, they're always voiced by some like popular actor and they're just doing it for a paycheck. Doug is actually, you could see a lot of care was put into voicing that character. He's very loyal the character itself. He loves his owners, well, the old people, uh, Carl and uh, Russell. And I, I just really love Doug. I, he reminds me of my own dog as well. So he has a soft spot in my heart. Nice, nice. Okay, Dev. All right. I just want to say I'm very much a dog person. Growing up, I've always had a dog. They are man's best friend, you know, loyal and playful and everything that's great in the world. And I relate to dogs is what I'm trying to say. And when I see a movie, I want the dog in the movie to relate to me in that same way. I want that relatability. And I think that Bolt from the movie Bolt does that very well. Um, the cool thing about him is that he's a dog that doesn't really know that he's a dog. So throughout the movie, we see him experience all the dog things for the first time. You know, he learns how to fetch. He, you know, learns how to hate the dog catcher. He learns how to, like, interact with cats. It's really interesting. Like, you get all those cute awe moments that you just associate with dogs already. And I think that that's why he's just the best movie dog. Gotcha. And we'll finish up with Trevor. Ladies and gentlemen, my choice for best film dog, I go to the golden receiver, Buddy, a.k.a. Air Bud. And why? Well, to, to the... Uh, opponent of my art of my uh, fellow arguments he is the only actual dog in this of in this entire list he based on a real dog himself but by that same token buddy is not voiced buddy does not have as far as we can tell he is an average dog but it is his actions that allow him to speak further than that he He's basically, there is nothing in the rule book against him. Nothing can stop him. He is one of the most quintessential figures in sports film history, if I must say so myself. As hyperbole as it sounds, I feel Air Bud is one of the most quintessential dogs in dog movies because of just the sheer amount of things that he's able to pull off and the hope and wonder that he brings to his owners. And with that, we'll go straight into our five-minute forum. Okay, I'm going to start off. Okay, Bolt, he doesn't think he's a dog. That takes away the whole point. We want to talk about dogs. He doesn't feature dog features. And Air Bud, he doesn't have a personality. All he does is play basketball. That's your argument. He plays basketball. In the sequels, he plays baseball and football. Doug, and soccer. What can I, and soccer, volleyball, whatever. He just does that. That's his personality. Yeah. 
He doesn't have a personality. That's what the fault of Airbud is. Because they used a real dog, it's a dog actor. He doesn't show his personality. But on that in screen. turn allows the audience to impart their own feelings upon Bud and but his motivation. Here's the thing that we love most about dogs is how much their personality shines on us. They feel like they're our best friend because we they can are. relate to them, just like Devin was saying. Yeah. I think Bolt, a thing about him is that he's not as charismatic it's john travolta voicing the dog have john you seen Gotti. some of john travolta's movies okay some of his movies are good but think Charisma about his movies on now. command with that man okay but here's the thing he well, doesn't feel dog like a, dog. a scientologist he doesn't feel like a dog he, he feels does. like john travolta voicing a dog having an identity crisis he feels like doug uh, is lovable he's heartwarming all right he just makes me want to i just want to reach to the screen and hug doug because squirrel all right i've been taking a lot of heat right now um i want to cut in so you man um, Airbud, let's be honest, no one can relate to Airbud. He is a dog that plays He's not meant to be a relatable figure, but rather a figure that we look up to. No. We I don't, don't look, look up to, up dogs. to dogs. Oh, we sorry. love dogs. But he, he breaks I borders. I There's nothing in the rule book that dogs. says that he can't be in a sport. I'm sorry, Nothing man. in the rule book. I am sorry. Does but, he, yeah. does no, your no, dog no. have an airport named after him and Bojack Horseman? I think not. He is not relatable. Airbud is isn't the point. No kid. Air that is isn't the mean. point. It is the point. Why do we like dogs? We mean. like them because we relate to them. When we see a portrayal of a dog in a movie, we like it because we can relate to it. We relate it to our own experience. I have never had a dog that could play basketball, volleyball, baseball, what, you know, foosball, whatever. Then I've what, never had a dog that could do that. Then what kind Probably. of dog air do you got? Okay, Doug, he feels real. He's animated. He can talk. But in the movie, actually, you're going right. to say if I'm Air Bud a, can't talk. If but I, here's the thing, Doug, the only reason he can talk is he has that collar on. He's not smarter than your average dog. He's just like any other dog, and I mean, that's what makes him so special. Bolt does not feel like a real dog. Here's the thing, he exactly does. He doesn't believe that he's a real dog in the beginning. He believes that he is some sort of super dog. May I say Over something? Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Over the course of the <laughs> film, he learns that he is, in fact, a dog, and you see him grow, and you see him experience all of but things. So what you're saying is that it's basically Truman from the Truman Show, no, no, no. but in a dog suit. It is. You we want to see and our exactly. dogs be dogs. You, you it's just another character, but a dog. You relate to the dog through his experience as growing as a okay, dog. Okay, here's the thing. Doug is the same throughout the movie. Lovable, yes, but he never grows. Okay, here's the thing about Bolt, though. We want to see dogs be dogs. You can make Bolt any other animal. You can make him a cat. It would still be the same thing. They would just learn cat things. At least whilst, my, whilst my dog can do bear. sports, it could yeah, be still a dog. Bolt. That's stupid. That's like saying that if a dog was a cat, he would do cat things. Of course he would. He'd be a no. cat. That's a dumb argument. Here's the thing. Dogs were an important part of Up. Okay, Bolt, here's the thing. There's... Not, I can't even remember that movie. That movie came out like 10 years ago. Um, I can remember Doug. He came out 10 years yeah. ago. He came out around the same time as Bolt. He's... Yeah. I, I if I to... may, I pr whilst I do remember Bolt personally, I do feel that in this case, he, I feel that he is less memorable character as Bud or even Doug because whilst, you know... <laughs> or <what>? even... <laughs> Because whilst Bolt does have somewhat of a unique personality, it's just that it's Truman, but a dog. And whilst yeah. that is entertaining, it lacks a sense of originality or even a truly dog-like nature that really? Bud or really? Doug can yours, apply. Yours is, Rudy, yours is Rudy with a dog. All yours right? doesn't even have anything about him. I can't remember what Air Bud yeah. does besides, oh, he does a slam dunk as a dog. Because yeah. he's a Wolf. dog! You don't all need right, many right, more words right, than it's a dog! Wolf, a slam say, dunk. I have to say in regards to Doug, he's not entirely relatable because he has he that is collar. relatable. No, he has that. He is relatable. He has that collar. He so says things. As, he shows like kids with like human, ADD could see themselves in Doug. We can see that in our dogs. Bolt, you can't. He's when, not. He, when he, Bolt when, is just a human. When Doug, basically. when Doug interacts with humans, he is allowed to talk with them. Like, okay, Bolt, recast it with a man who thinks he's a furry. Okay, <laughs> that's a guy learning a guy learning dog things. Okay, Doug, the quintessential thing about Doug is that he's a dog. That's the thing so about it. So is Bolt. I don't understand that argument. Guys, guys, mine no. was already a dog to begin with, so... Uh, mine is a dog, too. A dog that plays But mine was an actual dog. Is that dog. a normal dog? That doesn't count. Does your dog have a cinematic universe? I didn't think so. Okay. Did your dog... That doesn't do anything about it. Did your dog kickstart the Disney revival? DVD. <laughs> well, did your dog kickstart the Disney revival? It actually didn't. It a pretty mean slam reviews. dunk, I'll tell you what? that Your much. movie had Miley Cyrus in it. Yeah? Bingo! That's not a crime. So, before we start our 30-second conclusions, I want to say that there was so much talk of what constitutes a dog, I started to question if I knew what constitutes a dog. So I doodled a dog, my Yay. interpretation of a dog. 
Let me on see, my doggy. paper here. If we Number can... one pupper, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Doggy. And now we'll go into 30-second conclusions. We're going to start with Devin, then go Trevor, then finish off with Nathan. All right, once again, it comes down to that idea of relatability. I have an idea of dogs, and I want to relate to that when I see it on screen. I have never seen a dog that can play sports. That is not relatable. Secondly, I've never had a dog talk to me. I do not relate with that. I relate by seeing Bolt advance as a dog, by learning all the dog things, and then um, par uh, parlaying that to his owner, who cannot talk to him, unlike Doug. It's more relatable that way because there's that barrier. Let me put it this way. You've never seen a man fly. In a way, Buddy, a.k.a. Air Bud, is like Superman. You're not meant to relate to him. He is just a force of nature that comes into this world and does amazing things. Yes, they don't make sense, and yes, in all genuine honesty, you can't make sense of it. But sometimes, if you see a dog do a slam dunk, you just have to take it at face value. He is a dog, an actual dog, a real breathing dog that is connected with the audience over millennia, many, or not millennia, but years and films and films, and he deserves to be top dog. Top dog! <laughs> And we'll finish up with Nathan. Okay, do you really believe that dog and Airbud could play basketball? Or soccer? Or football? Or volleyball? And here's the thing. You just said that what makes Bolt what a thing about Airbud is that he doesn't talk. But Bolt talks the whole movie. He doesn't shut the hell up. That's the thing. Not the Doug, he does talk. But he has that collar. And I remember, I ask my uh, sister this all the time. Like, okay, what movie dog reminds you of our dog or our grandma's dog, or even like our neighbor's dog. Okay. Okay, any facts to check for? What dog was it? Just what a definition dog? that might help you in Please. your deliberation. Please. So, dog is defined <laughs> as a domesticated carnivorous mammal <laughs> that typically has a long Doggy. snout, an acute sense of smell, Yay. and a barking, howling, or cute. whining voice. It is widely kept as a pet for work or field sports. Oh, very cool. But it's so there's cute. another definition. Oh, um, oh here we go. Oh, dear God. A person regarded as unpleasant, <laughs> contemptible, or wicked, used as a form of abuse. Oh. Well, I better show myself out. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I'm going to give first place to Trevor. Yes! Yes! What? Second, what? Second place <laughs> to Nathan. What is your reasoning? And third place to Devin. What? I will tell you my reasoning, Devin. Uh, what? My reasoning is... The question asks for best movie dog, and although Air Bud does not have any lines, he does the best and most accurate portrayal of a dog what? in a what? movie. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That's stupid. Dogs don't play basketball. Besides the basketball. That's thing. all he does in a movie is he does slam dunks. Did you listen to our arguments at all? Oh, of course I did. Of course, no. Second... I'm going to give Nathan second because I believe that Doug is the second best interpretation of a movie dog. He is a dog if you married him with a human personality. But the key word is you have to marry him with a human personality. Air Bud manages to be a widely known film with no dialogue, no psychology behind the dog. It was basically a dog doing a really good sports trick. And sometimes that's all you need. That's so all he does, though. <laughs> and Devin that's all he does. I, I'm in agreement. All right. <laughs> he Airbud is the worst dog on this list. <laughs> but he's the only real dog. That doesn't count. <laughs> Continue. Let's see. And and Devin, I'm afraid I have to give you third, just because I think Trevor and Nathan hit you with that bolt. Kind of felt more like human psychologies and problems, just in a dog suit. And so I think, like, Trevor hits you with, like, it's basically the Truman Show with a dog. And so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to reiterate that, for myself as much as you, <laughs> first place is Trevor with Airbud. <laughs> Second place is Nathan with Doug. And third place is Devin with Bolt. This has been Cardinal Film Fights. I'm your host, judge, and moderator, Mark Rollins. Be sure to interact with that social media, and we will see you next time. Have a good night.